What's up, my brothers from another mother? We got a request here from a subscriber that wants me to help me out with what he claims could potentially be the worst case of one-itis in human history. So he's a medical student, 30 years old. Let's hop right into this. Uh, from an external perspective, I already have a life together, yet for some reason I keep struggling to keep my mind straight and I need your guidance. Some background about me. I'm normally pretty outgoing, witty, well-spoken, although I am not one you would consider a party guy in any sense of the world. I don't drink, smoke, or use any illicit substances. I am well-traveled, well-cultured, and well-read. I play a multitude of instruments. I have a comfortable number of friends, considering my extremely limited time. I try to exercise as much as I can, but with my erratic schedule, I find it difficult to get into routine. Currently, I am running approximately 60 to 20 miles a week, but have very little in the way of weight training. Well, you can improve right there, my brother. Nothing is more attractive to women than a masculine physical physique. Ask me how I know. Uh, I have very, I have had a very strict childhood where excellence was demanded of me and failure was met with severe consequences. This doctrine in childhood caused me to distance myself from my parents and siblings. I have never had very much in a luck away romance. Well, right here, this is probably what's leading up to your one-itis. I can see it already building which I believe is result in a sort of complex that I've built around myself. I am very overweight now. Okay, dude, how are you running 60 to 20 miles a week if you're overweight? I'm very overweight now, particularly due to a medical condition that I have partially due to overwhelming stress and lack of sleep. I would be dealing with that before you have any concerns around women, dude. Uh, but I'd wager it's mostly due to my diet. Although I'm not addicted to drugs or alcohol, I can say that I'm addicted to caffeine, food, and porn. I have had, I have also been diagnosed with major depressive disorder and ADD. Hmm. Okay. I can already see this case building. I used to be in a very large dose of, I don't even know what that is or that. Well, butrin. I know I've heard of well, butrin respectively. Uh, if I'm being honest with myself, you, I'm also what you might consider a clingy due to likely to my disconnection from my family as a child. Well, the first, the first thing you got to do aside from lifting weights and losing the body weight is get off this crap. This, this, uh, like I know there's guys that go on it and, uh, you know, the medical profession and people will, will, will script it and it, and it does work. Like I know guys that are on it that have said, wow, it was, you know, it was a big game changer. You know, I felt well, the Wellbutrin actually worked. Uh, the problem with it is it messes with your sexual function, it messes with your uh, other bodily functions, and you don't need it. I mean, it's it's a false sense of well-being that you can overcome. I mean, lifting weights is a great way to feel good. It's it, it The problem with it, though, that most guys aren't prepared to deal with is the time invested in getting the results. Um, if you're the guy that wants to flick on a light switch or rub a pill, uh, or sorry, take a pill or rub a cream on their face and they want to look like Brad Pitt or lose, you know, 20 pounds in a week, um, it's not going to work, but this is a quick fix and it scares me when I talk to guys or they tell me that they're on some kind of antidepressant, get off that. That would be my first piece of advice to you. The big piece of advice anyway. Anyway, let's hear your story. So for the story, it's extremely long in detail. I'll try my best to keep it as simple as possible. Approximately three years ago, I started my master's program with the same facility. I'm currently attending in medical school. Very quickly after starting, I met what was believed the girl of my dreams. Well, you're starting off with a one-itis um, mindset. But that's how most guys start, right? Uh, anyway, let's keep going. We liked all the same things. We agreed almost on all things political. We had the same per <laughs> perverted sense of humor. and We spent almost all of our time together. This was mostly due to the fact that we were both master's program and had spent most of our time studying, but we also spent a very large percentage of our free time together, both with group and as a couple. It wasn't very long before we became extraordinarily close. We would drive hours just to spend time with me. She would drive hours to spend time with me and she invited to have Thanksgiving with her and her family. I fell in love with her to the state, to state the obvious. Everything pointed to the start of a strong relationship, but there was a catch. She was coming out of an abusive relationship with a manipulative drug addict. As she said, she wasn't emotionally available for another relationship yet. So dude, right here, she's, she's trying to put you into the friend zone. As soon as you go through everything that leads up to what you're describing there, she's basically proposing a without overtly stating it and women are are are, are really bad at this because they like free attention right and she's basically telling you in a covert fashion 
that she wants you to be in the friend zone and sees nothing beyond that. Anyway, emotionally available for another uh, relationship yet. Well, my sad, lonely heart took that and ran with it. I sat there patiently for months to her to come around because that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to fall in love with your best friend. This is where, yeah, this is total BS. This is blue pill conditioning. This is nonsense. It's what Disney teaches people. Suddenly, almost as if someone flipped a switch, she started acting rather distant and cold. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. <laughs> oh, man. Distance and cold. She started to randomly cancel plans that we had pre previously made. She would forget to call or text uh, when she did. She started using more one-word responses, and she would respond with weird ways, like I would message, hey, and she would respond with yes. Shortly after this started up, my grandmother passed away. After I returned from the funeral, I looked for emotional support. Dude, she's not... <laughs> See, I, I, I literally just uploaded a video and did the thumbnail and the tags, and that video will be out before... You the public sees this. Um, you're going to see this privately before everybody else does. But women have girlfriends and boyfriends. If you're not banging, you're her girlfriend. Um, and women don't offer any kind of emotional support. She's she's really there just to seek free attention from you. And you gave it to her. You freely gave it to her. You don't, you don't give free attention without an exchange, right? Like there's got to be something in it for you and you're not getting it. And when your grandmother died, you're going looking for it and it doesn't exist. Anyway, um, one word responses, short grandmother passed. After I returned from the funeral, looked for support. We already had established that kind of relationship, but she didn't want anything to do with it. As it turns out, she was secretly seeing a mutual friend, a person you would consider my best guy friend in the program. I was already emotionally damaged by losing my grandmother, but this betrayal, absolute dude, she doesn't, <laughs> Ooh, yeah, see right there. Let's, let's talk about relationship equity uh, because the frame that you're coming from here is, uh, I was her friend, I drove for hours with her, she invited me to her family, I was her emotional tampon, blah, 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 blah. I put a, you know, you know deposits into the relationship that you deem that she, that she had with her and now you wanna make a withdrawal from it. But lo and behold, hold, you're disappointed because she's now banging your friend. Well, that's female nature. It's not betrayal, it is female nature. You have to get it in your thick head, guys, that you know, women will act in a very predictable fashion. I, you know, I really hope this offers some clarity to you, my friend. Um, and I really appreciate you, you know, helping me create content and supporting what I'm doing here. But you're obviously paying me to get the cold hard truth bombs and this is what I'm giving you. So you freak out. I completely lost yourself with grief, guilt, hatred, disgust, depression. In all honesty, I had become what uh, we call in the medical field as SI, which stands for suicidal ideation. I'm not sure if that's idealation. Anyway, I'm reading that as it, as it stands. Uh, no attempts were made, however, long story short, we started a very high dose of antidepressant therapy and started seeing a psychotherapist because I could barely muster. I'm guessing this is probably the first girl that, that gave you any kind of uh, interest signals. And you took it and you ran with it. Uh, it helped me a little, but feeling hopeless for a long time. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so you're anti antidepressants here. Fast forward a bit. We graduate from the program, start working at a respective internship. She splits up with the other guy, and then we start spending tons of time together again. Of course, you're there for her as soon as she breaks up from porking the other guy, right? We, be, You know, we were becoming a lot more physical this time around. She would often come over and spend the night with me or vice versa. We never actually had sex. Dude, you put yourself in the friend zone. You got nobody to blame but yourself. You put yourself in the friend zone. You need to express romantic interest in a woman if you're interested in her. This whole nonsense that guys do time and time again where they put themselves in a friend zone and then they get disappointed and they go on antidepressants because she doesn't reciprocate, that's on you as men. You need to express interest earlier on. If it's not reciprocated, see you later. Men and women don't have similar interests, okay? I like cars, guns, going fast, boats, wake surfing, planes. I like shit like that. There's no woman that has those genuine interests in it. The only genuine interest that they have in it is because of the hypergamy and they see that, um, you know, being around me facilitates that, right? So it's like, it's not even like you're going to have similar interests with women. I mean, you're spending time with her, giving her free attention for nothing in return. Anyway, you would kiss and we're comfortable being naked around each other. But 
Uh, you would often go on dates or schedules allowed it. It was so refreshing to have her back in my life again, but still you're not banging. You're not being intimate. Um, it was like I was able to remove anchors from my shoulders. I took it as a signal that things were heading in the right direction. So I let myself open up again. Big mistake. We did that for a couple of months and then she starts up with the flaky flighty BS. It's dude, this is on you. <laughs> this is what happens when you get in the friend zone with women. Stop it. Yet again, I find out the title of this video is going to be what happens when men put themselves in a friend zone. Yet again, I find out that she's secretly seeing another guy behind my back. We had a huge fight about it, and she somehow convinced me it was all my fault. <laughs> it was, because you because you got in the friend zone with her, dude. And I had no right to assume that we would be anything more than friends. I don't know why, but my heart simply would not let her go. I tried distancing myself, and I thought that she would every day. Uh, it was like I was trapped in her clutches. No matter what I could do, couldn't get out. A few months for agony. Okay, so... You know, not only did you go for round one, but you went back for round two. It's like you're a glutton for punishment, right? Let's keep going. Then Ben's school starts up, and guess what? She's in the same class as me. Me and the moron that I am, I try to restart that relationship. So you're going down for a third time. Unsurprisingly, it didn't work, and also surprisingly, it really cut me deep. I don't know what, why I somehow genetically incapable of separating myself from her. Even to this day, I have these weird fantasies that will work and be together someday, and I still think about her every day. It doesn't really help that I'm forced to see her five to six days a week for various reasons. At this point, it's like I'm being forced to bear witness to my own failures and shortcomings and being constantly reminded of them in a brutal way. Well, there you go. I mean, you're being reminded of female nature. I simply cannot move on. Apart from that, I've been able to talk to other girls. I haven't done anything. Okay, dating apps are a joke, and all the girls here at the school are either married or in long-term relationships. Most of the time, I don't even get a text back, let alone a date. Sorry for the novel. Really stuck here. Okay, so here's your clarifying questions. I guess what I'm looking for most here is what do I do? Where do I start? How do I even get started? How do I keep it going? Student doctor. Well, student doctor, um, I've given you some tips along the way. Um, so let's kind of sum it up. You got into the friend zone with her. You tried to get into an LTR with her three times, didn't work out, and she was ended up porking other guys behind your back. Um, you were never in a relationship with her, but um, she basically used you as an emotional tampon. Uh, doesn't even sound like you're even being intimate with her, although it sounds like you were kissing, which is bizarre. Um, so what do we do? Well, first of all, how do you, how do you, how do you move on from this? What was your question? Where do I start? How do I even get started? First of all, get off the damn antidepressants and start going to the gym and picking up heavy shit and putting it down. I would also encourage you to get into, I think you said you're 30. Uh, you got a lot of runway, dude. I mean, the good news is you're a young man. You're just going to come up in your sexual market value peak, right? I mean, for most guys, it's around 35 to 40. You can push into your 40s if you're a man chasing excellence and really on your game. But you got lots of runway, so that's the good news. How do you get there? Pick up heavy shit, put it down. Build a masculine physique. Broad shoulders, narrow waist, lose the fat, get off the antidepressants. I'd also recommend doing something that would uh, help you win. And I'm not talking about like, you know, medical wins in your profession, but something physical where you could compete. I don't know if that's a martial art, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, boxing, soccer, uh, ultimate Frisbee. I don't know what that looks like for you, but do something that allows you to compete, maybe even chess. Anything that lets you compete. Nothing along the video games lines. I don't encourage guys to pick up that for something to compete. That's not real. You need to do something physical. You need to have physical, real wins in the real world. Um, not only does that boost testosterone, not only does that improve confidence, but it will certainly help you move past this. Um, you need to start looking better too. I mean, if you're 30 and you're carrying around that extra body weight and on antidepressants, you're basically zombified is the way that I would put it. I know that there's some people that can function to a high degree on antidepressants and still carry around a lot of body weight, but I guarantee even if you feel successful now in your own profession and what you're doing, that would increase... I'm not going to say tenfold, but significantly. It would increase significantly by removing the extra body fat, finding a way to compete, finding something that you can compete in that you enjoy. F figure it out. I don't know what that is. Could be mountain biking, could be cycling. I don't know. Figure it out. But whatever it is, find out what that is. And stop getting yourself in the friend zone. Guys, for the love of God, for, stop it. Stop getting yourself in the friend zone. Stop giving away free attention to these women. They're not going to reciprocate. You only give them attention if it's reciprocated. You only... You only do that 
when you've expressed genuine desire for you. Some resources for you. So let's kind of move into resources and next steps because that's what you're asking about as well. I would read No More Mr. No nice Guy by Dr. Robert Glover. I think that's pinned in my description and my recommended reading list. In fact, read every book in my recommended reading list that I have down below there. That would be one. Um, Mode One by Alan Roger Curry. That stuff works. Get your head around it. Um, you can have some success on dating apps, but the reason why you're not successful is because you're basically the fat, nice guy that gets in friend zones. And that's not what women want. I know that we've been conditioned all our lives as men to just be her friend and be yourself. And one day the right one will come along, son. And you know, she's just going to love you for who you are. And that's the BS story that our parents told us. You know, usually moms tell their sons that it's a very good you know, lyric that's regurgitated often by single moms to their sons. Um, but it's not true as you've experienced yourself almost three times now. So you got to wake up from those realities. The other thing, if you have the capacity, I would strongly encourage you to get some coaching. I do coaching in this area. I'm not cheap. Uh, I'm highly effective. You could probably get a lot out of doing it for a couple months. Um, on the top right of the screen, I'll put a card up to the coaching page. You might want to consider that. Or if you just want to do like a quick one-on-one, -on -one, it's uh, clarity.fm forward slash Richard Cooper. That might be of some use to you. But um, you need to go deeper because there's an underlying belief system that you have that's getting you the crappy results. I've talked about um, results, choices, and belief systems. Just to quickly recap, our belief system is basically hardwired into us. It's our operating system. It's how uh, our heart, our gut, our brain is wired to make choices. That governs the choices that we make. The choices that we make will get the results. I can always tell somebody's belief system what it looks like by looking at the results they get. Nobody ever writes me one of these requests and says, I'm getting awesome results out of life. Richard, praise me and say thank you and put this out there. It's always, I've got a problem. I've got something I'm really stuck on and I've made some bad choices. Although they never say that I've made bad choices. Bad choices get your crap results and that comes from your belief system beneath. You need to update what's inside your operating system. You're due for a software update, my brother. Anyway, I'm happy to help you out with that. If you'd like some assistance, I hope that this um, response adds some clarity uh, to your friend zoning. I wouldn't, I wouldn't title this video or even consider this the worst case of one-itis in human history. This is the, this is one of the what worst cases, or this is really what happens when men allow themselves to get in the friend zone three times with the same chick. Okay. Anyway, I'll leave it at that. Thanks for checking out today's video. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.